All right, everyone, let's get started. Uh, I hope everyone have their morning coffee or the evening tea in whichever time zone you are and can also hear me well. So thank you everyone for attending this webinar. I, I, my name is Achal Mahajan and I'm a senior application engineer working with the computational biology group at MathWorks. So I typically work with scientists in academia and industry to help them in their modeling of biological systems using MathWorks toolboxes and MATLAB specifically. And today I'm going to give you an overview of SimBiology as a tool to model and simulate biological systems, uh, focusing particularly on synthetic biology systems that you might be familiar with. So as you all might be aware of, modeling is an important component of synthetic biology and, and the iGEM competition. And within the context of synthetic biology, modeling and simulation can serve uh, different purposes. So some teams build models as part of the design process, or some teams might use modeling as a way to characterize the system after building it and optimize or improve its behavior. So uh, today, the objective of today's presentation is really to provide you an overview of symbology features so that you can achieve multiple goals. Some of them would be you can evaluate if this is an appropriate tool for your modeling work. And if it is, then this session will definitely give you a better sense of how you can start using it. So we hope that the information we provide you today will make you accomplish your modeling objectives in a easier and, and a more effective manner. All right. So before we get started uh, with the demonstration, here's some information about uh, what MathWorks is offering as for the iGEM teams and how you can get access to the SimBiology and other MATLAB tools that, that's, that's listed here. So MathWorks has been associated with iGEM competition since its early years. And every year as a sponsor, uh, we provide iGEM teams free access to the suite of MATLAB tools that are listed here. And some of you most likely have access to MATLAB tools through university licenses. However, uh, the toolbox configuration on those licenses might be different than what we provide to the teams via the iGEM. So through schools, you may have access to some of these toolboxes, uh, but may not have access to the others. And if that's the case, uh, we encourage you to request uh, the complimentary software for your team in order to make sure uh, that you have access to all the tools that you need. So uh, the process to get those tools is straightforward and fairly simple. And for more information, you can go on to the MathWorks sponsor page on this item homepage and this page describes the process of how to get the X, how, how you can access those tools as well as uh, other helpful resources that will help you to, uh, to model the, to model, to get started with the modeling, uh, modeling in your, of your system. So the software package contains these 12 tools, which we believe are the most relevant for the iGEM competition. But if you think there are more, please reach out to us and we can see, uh, we can add those uh, in the, in the next year or, or this year. So before we get started, uh, let me ask you uh, a question you can post in the chat. How many of you have used MATLAB or any other above toolbox? You can post in the chat and, and, and let me know how many of you have used it. So I'll give you 30 seconds, just pour it in the chat and we can get started after that. All right, so, so for, the, for the purpose of today, we're gonna primarily look at focus on the symbiology uh, and how you can use it for the purpose of the modeling. So what exactly is Symbiology? So Symbiology is a MATLAB based tool to model and simulate and analyze the biological systems. So biological system is a broad term. Uh, so I will narrow it down to any reaction based model whose dynamics can be represented by a system of ordinary differential equations. Uh, and these you can simulate using the Symbiology. So Symbiology has some nice attributes that makes it appealing tool for modeling and simulation, especially for iGEM teams. Firstly, it has this graphical modeling interface. This enables you to start building and running model implementation very quickly. You don't have to worry about writing these intensive mass balance equations or the system of ODEs. You just need to draw the model, specify the kinetic of the interaction and just hit run and it's that simple. And as you all, 
already probably know that time is a critical factor in IGEM competition. So having a modeling tool like Symbio can make the process more efficient uh, and is highly beneficial for you. Uh, so this also applies when it comes to analysis and Symbiology has built in simulation and analysis tasks in order to streamline your workflow. And you can use this built-in task to simulate your model with stochastic and deterministic ODE solvers. You can also analyze your system with sensitivity analysis, parameter sweeps, and so on. And this means that you don't have to write your own tools and you can just use them in Symbio Symbiology. Uh, but if you know someone in your team who, who knows MATLAB, you can take advantage of Symbiology's integration with MATLAB. And that way you can take your modeling effort even further than the inbuilt functionality that the Symbiology provides. And finally, Symbiology has SBML support. And as some of you may know, SBML stands for Systems Biology Markup Language and is a standard markup, markup language for sharing models. You don't need necessarily need to build your models from scratch in Symbio. Uh, if you find the models that you are interested in in one of these SBML repositories, you can directly open these files in Symbio and can then just get started. So, so we want to look at two specific models today and to understand how we can use some of the capabilities of Symbiology. The first one here on the left we will be working with today is probably something a lot of you are familiar with. It is the Repressilator model from Allowitz, and it was the one of the earliest examples of synthetic gene network. And using this example, we will look at how to build and simulate models in Symbiology and explore the effects of the changes in parameter values on the model outputs that you have. We will start by assuming parameters and do some parameter scans to understand how varying the parameters can, affect, can have effect on the dynamics. And with the second example at the right, we will look at how we will use experimental data that you get from the wet lab or other kind of experiments and a mathematical model of your system, you can perform data fitting to calibrate some of, calibrate the model and estimate some of the kinetic parameters in your system. And for this example, we will use a batch bioreactor model. So let's start with the repressilator. Uh, it's a complementary approach to design and construct a synthetic gene network, genetic network to understand essential functions inside the living cell. So the typical key to these networks is to identify the key molecular components and the interactions between them so that you can use this information to construct this circuit from scratch using some of the synthetic biology approaches. So the example here consists of three transcriptional uh, repressor systems or genes to build this oscillatory network. And the genes are LSCL, TETR, and Lambda CL, and they are connected in a feedback loop. And this entire network, if you look closely, consists of cyclic and three negative feedback loops and displays stable oscillatory behavior. And by negative, it means that each gene, uh, it, each gene produces each gene product represses the next gene in the loop and is also repressed by the product of the previous gene. And that's what it means by negative feedback. So one is increasing, it will decrease the other and it will increase the, other, the next one. And then the process reverses and so on and so forth. And to analyze the repressilator, we need to write, write down our set of differential equations. And the rate, the first set of equation is the rate of change of each protein and is described as the rate of translation minus the degradation part here. And then the rate of change of the mRNA is described as the transcription, which is given by the Hill equation. And subtracting the degradation part will give you the complete ODE. And we can implement this and simulate the model in Symbiology to explore the dynamics in a more systematic manner. And I will show you how to do it. And the graphic you see has been direct on the left that you see has been directly exported from Symbiology and you can use one, one such feature can be used for report generation or publishing your data, uh, publishing your results or publishing your data. And with the second example, uh, we will look at how with experimental data and a mathematical model of your system, you can perform data fitting to calibrate and estimate the kinetic parameters. 
So batch bioreactor are typically involved in manufacturing process industries like pigments, dyes, chemicals, pharmaceuticals. And the important point here is that the process needs to be extremely efficient and repeatable, especially when it comes to pharmaceutical industries. So not only we are interested in finding a best formula uh, uh, to, to optimize the product yield, we are also interested in determining how to control this process. And these process can be highly complex, but for the purpose of demonstration, we'll consider a simple formulation uh, so that we can focus on the, just the analysis part and not get bogged down with the, with the details of the model. So with that in mind, I will consider two species, the nutrients that acts as a food source and the biomass of an organism that grows by consuming this uh, nutrient. And as you can see, the nutrient is modeled such as it decomposes over time. There's a negative uh, uh, rate constant. Uh, and due to it decays due to a lot of environmental variables such as the temperature. And, but in reality, it will also be a function of concentration of the biomass. Uh, and however, we will model the change in concentration of the biomass a little more realistically uh, to account for the growth as well as the depth. So you have the positive increase and then the negative and the, and then the negative term which, which results in the death or the decay of the biomass. So uh, So the organism, so the, the process, it, it goes something like this. The organism will begin eating and reproducing based on the availability, uh, based on the availability of the nutrient. And since the cells have a very finite lifetime, they will die off in proportion to the current biomass concentration. And at some point, food will start to run out because it's decaying and the death process will begin to dominate such that the biomass will eventually go to zero. Uh, now with this model, we can predict some of the parameters in the model using the experimental data. So let's start with the repressed litter model. And for that, I will go to the MATLAB and Symbiology uh, to, to, construct this, to construct this model. So let's first uh, look at the demo for the repressed litter model using Symbio. First, we need to launch the Symbiology app by typing Symbio in the MATLAB command window. And for those who are new to MATLAB, allow me to give you a quick tour of the four main areas as soon as you open MATLAB. So the current folder is the place where MATLAB is going to look for the scripts and the other files. Here I have a bunch of files. It will look uh, in a directory and it will look up all the files that, that exist there. And it also shows all the files on the path and the in the address bar here. So the command window here allows you to immediately execute commands and run scripts and variable created by these commands or scripts will show up here in the workspace. So let me open a uh, Symbiology app so that we can get started. So once we open the Symbiology app here, uh, the, the, uh, the model builder app, it, it opens up a model builder app that provides a block diagram editor to build our models more in, uh, interactively. And let me open the rep repressilator model, which I have already created for the purpose of today's uh, presentation. So here is the repressilator model in the app. Uh, and for, for the purpose of today's presentation, I've already developed this model from scratch and you can construct your own following some of the resources that I will share towards the end. So the diagram here you see in the middle is not a graphical representation, just the graphical representation, but it is the model itself. Uh, and Symbiology project, which is what I'm showing you can hold multiple models, it can hold data sets. It can also hold a lot of analysis programs, which I'll show you in the later part of the talk and is typically a container for the modeling projects. So let's go quickly over the structure of the model. We have uh, three proteins here uh, that are formed from the translation of, uh, from the corresponding mRNA transcripts. And the dotted line indicated here uh, shows that the mRNA is both the product as well as the reactant in the reaction. So the trans translation is represented that way because the transcripts are not getting consumed in the reaction, but the level of mRNA directly affects the translation rate. So the transcription reaction are color coded uh, with the red dot 
And the negative feedback that I talked about in the slides is incorporated via the rate expression that is shown over here. Uh, so you can see that the inhibitory uh, protein appears in the denominator, implying that the higher protein level will impede the translation rates. And that's what the negative feedback is. It, it's all about. So each component here also degrades via a simple linear process. And the good thing about is this is that you can specify your own kinetic laws depending on the dynamical system that you are trying to model. Some of the examples are mass action, Michaelis Menten, Hill kinetics, and so on and so forth. And you can specify your own rate kinetics as well, uh, depending on the system. So to build this entire model, we will use the block library on the top to add state variables like mRNA here, proteins, and the compartment that uh, inside where the reaction is going on. So this list include blocks for all the modeling constructs that, that, uh, that we are trying to do. So all you need to do is drag and drop the blocks on the diagram directly. For example, you want to add a reaction to the network. So we will use this circular block to add equations to the system. And all you need to do is just connect them to the species block in the compartment. And on the top of that, the entire setup is placed here inside a closed compartment for which, uh, for this and for our particular case, we call it the cell. And finally, this model has some additional uh, mathematical uh, algebraic uh, information that cannot be captured as a reaction. And oftentimes you want to specify these mathematical relations uh, between the model components that cannot be simply represented by the, by the mass balance equations. Um, so for example, uh, when a rate constant depends on another rate constant, which is the KTL here, it depends on the translation efficiency. So you need to, you can specify as repeated assignments or rules uh, in, in SIM biology. So the repressilator has uh, model, as you can see, has quite a few rules uh, that define dependencies be between various model parameters. And uh, since there are ODs involved, we need to also have initial conditions uh, for each of the proteins and the mRNA, which must be specified. And then the values of the parameters also needs to be specified before we go into simulating and perform all the, all the post-processing analysis. And finally, once we have constructed this model in SimBio, uh, we also need to know what the set of coupled ODE is. Uh, so what SimBiology does is it creates, constructs these uh, set of couple ODEs in the background, which you can see by going to the equation view here. So here you can just see the list of ODEs that just is generated automatically and the expression that makes up this model together with the model initial values. So this makes it quite easier to cross check what we are doing uh, is consistent uh, with, our, with our model. So, the one good thing about the graphical representation like this of the complex models, uh, it helps with the communication between the modelers or between the modeler and the experimentalists. And you might have to, uh, to also collaborate with your wet lab colleagues and trying to, uh, trying to uh, communicate this information to them. And that, that, that makes it extremely useful. Uh, and also using the diagram, building complex mechanistic models is really easy. All you need to do is simply drag and drop and connect these blocks from the block library. Uh, and as we just saw, uh, using the diagram, you can build models as you would just do it on a piece of paper. And Symbiology will generate the ODEs behind this graphical representation for you and also lets you see these equations. So let's, uh, let's quickly move on to the analysis and the simulation part. So let's go ahead first and simulate this model using, uh, using the SimBiology Model Analyzer app, which is here at the tops. So what it'll do is it'll open another, uh, another window. And once we open the app on the left-hand side, you will see the content browser, which shows the content of the SimBiology project, and it includes model, observational data, and simulation programs. So uh, all the model programs in the project are displayed uh, in the workspace here. And if you want to, if you need to add a new program, all you need to do is go to the program, 
and this gives you a sense of the available options that you that you want to choose like parameter estimation parameter sweeps and sensitivity analysis and 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 bunch of other options as well but today i'm just going to focus only on few of them because of the time constraints and let's start with just simulating the program so that's probably the most important and the, probably the first step uh, whenever you want to do any dynamical system modeling is to simulate the system and we can go to the program and just click on the simulate model program and it will open up a program window which has the which has a bunch of details so the top bar here uh, shows the information on the sequence of the steps involved in the simulation where each step you can remove or add based on your preference like you want to generate samples you want to have a steady state uh, profile you want to calculate observables and and so on also uh, each uh, symbiology project has a simul uh, simulation settings associated with it and in the simulation settings you can specify which solver you want to use uh, you can also specify the simulation stop time for the sim for stop time and the tolerance uh, you want to set for the solver and in addition to that, there is dimensional analysis because we are dealing with dimensions. And this ensures that all the dimensions in the reactions are consistent. And if you see some error, that means that the dimensions are not consistent in your model. And just for the, uh, and just for the note, uh, models with small number of molecules can realistic, realistically be simulated stochastically. And you can choose the option as stochastic solver if you want to add if you want if you want to allow the results to contain an element of probability uh, uh, compared to a regular deterministic solution and in the program itself uh, you, we can also specify which states uh, we are interested to see in the simulation plots here i have a bunch of them uh, but for the case of the repressor model we are only interested to see the evolution of the proteins and the mrna uh, transcripts so what I'll do is I will just uncheck all of them and only check the ones which are the most important ones, which are the proteins and the corresponding mRNAs. And once we have that, we, I also want to, we want to run the simulation till thousand minutes. And once we have everything done, everything is, all this, the setup is ready. We, all we need to do is run the simulations and it will create the plot uh of the how of e, how each species evolves in time and to the right uh we have the property editor uh and it allows you to edit your plots based on the species concentration that you want to see uh in the plot so if i just want to see how the proteins evolve i can just uncheck them and it only show me the information about the proteins I can also change the scale to a log scale or a semi-log scale. And since the mRNA concentration here is very low compared to the protein, a better way of visualizing them is to use the semi-log Y plot. And this gives you, a, for both uh, the mRNA and the protein, uh, a better visualization compared to a, compared to a Cartesian uh, plot. So we can also generate separate plots for each type of species here, it's kind of, everything is on the same plot and if you want to separate the three of them all you need to do is just select the species of the same type and then create a new set and it gives you two different plots and you can see them separately and just like that we can play around with uh with the properties and display the most useful information that you need uh for for the analysis so till now all we saw was how to simulate the model for the set of parameters that we have already specified in the, in the model builder app. So let us say I'm interested in exploring how changes in translational efficiency, which is one of the parameters in the system, change my protein profiles. So one, one, one way is to go back and change the rate constant in the model builder app. But sometimes if you have a range of parameters, this might not be a, uh, this might not be a great way of changing, then you have to input every time you want to change the parameters. So a better way of doing is investigate, in a, a more interactive way to investigate the effects of various parameters on the dynamic is more desirable for this case. And that's where the Explorer tools comes into play. 
Uh, so let's let's look at how to do this, and we can create sliders uh, for each prop parameter that we wanted to change dynamically, and analyze its effects on the response. So on the Explorer panel, uh, we can create uh, we can create the sliders for the model quantities, and for this, I will drag and drop three different parameters and see their effect on the mRNA and the protein. So the first one that I'm interested in is the translational efficiency. The second one is mRNA half-life and then the protein half-life. And if you notice, each time I change the position of the side slider, you see that the model, re the model is re-simulated and then it replots the updated information. And that's a great way of, do of, of visualizing. Uh, it's a great way of interactively visualizing the, visualizing the changing in parameters affecting the dynamics. And you can also choose to overlay uh, the results to clearly see the effect of changing uh, the parameter values and quantifying and quantifying the differences. And you start to see all different parameters lying on top of each other, uh, and you can quantify the differences between the two. So the labeling for each parameter is shown in the scenarios here for three different values of three different parameters. And this shows how robust and fast doing things in Symbology is rather than doing everything from the scratch. So the interactive exploration here that we saw is useful and it also gives a sense of moral sensitivity to change in parameters. But what if you like to streamline and automate this interactive exploration we performed via slider? Uh, now we need to do is do a parameter scan. So to do this, uh, we need to again go to the project here, uh, uh, to the program here and use the run scan option which will open a corresponding program window. But rather than doing it, I will use a program that I have already created for the purpose of today's demonstration and we'll just uh, uh, move along with that. So, so for the present model, let's say I want to investigate the effect of translation efficiency again, and then the protein half-life. Uh, so there are multiple there are multiple ways of generating the sets of parameters. Either we can specify our own range, or uh, or we can or choose the parameter values from a distribution like a Poisson, normal, or uniform to generate a range of parameter values. So for the translational efficiency, we can gen I want to generate its values by using a inbuilt MATLAB lint space command. And what it does is it creates equally spaced values of the parameters. So what I'm going to have is three values, which ranges from five to 30. And then for the protein half-life, I'm going to have individual values, which are five and 10. So that's how uh, easy it is. And once we have the setup everything, all we need to do is just click on the run and it will create the plots for the corresponding parameter values uh, for the translation efficiency, which is the vertical, the varying in vertical, and then the protein half-life is varying horizontally. So each column represents a value of protein half-life for the varying value of trace translation efficiency, and each row represents a value of translation efficiency for varying protein half-life. Uh, and here I'm only showing you the protein evolution and you can look at the other variables as well by just clicking on checking these options and you will also see the evolution of mRNAs. And as we can see here, just increasing the translation efficiency increases the proteins being formed. And at the same time, the oscillations are less frequent as we increase the protein half-life. So, so far, up to this point, we have seen a few built-in tasks like simulation and parameter scan. However, uh, since Symbology is built on top of MATLAB, it also gives you the ability to write your own analysis script and, and bring them into desktop as a user-defined task. And everything I showed on the app has a command line equivalent as well in MATLAB. So you can either run Symbology analysis directly from uh, MATLAB scripts by viewing the program or run them from the app as a custom analysis program. So for the example 
here we have a user defined task which run a scan across translational efficiency but instead of plotting a time constitution profile like i showed you previously we can plot solutions parametric parametrically as orbits in 3d space to describe the behavior uh, of to describe the behavior in the dynamics so this is a custom script uh, that i imported and i created a 3d phase plot uh, and since this is a dynamical system, they will uh, it it will have a, a uh, it will have a stable part which oscillates, which has an oscillating region. So, if you are interested in extending the built-in analysis program or automate your analysis, you can use this uh, uh, this custom script uh, to to kind of automate your workflow. So. So next, uh, we move on to quickly to the bioreactor uh, example to see the workflow uh, for the parameter estimation if you have some kind of experimental data. And to demonstrate this, I will use, uh, uh, I will use the bioreactor model and, the per and it, I'm, going, I'm going to use the same way, just going to open the bioreactor model and it will open up, uh, uh, it will open up another model where we'll go over the bioreactor example. So uh, here in the model uh, diagram for the reactor and inside the reactor, as I mentioned in the slides, there is food, which is the nutrient, and there are things that eats, uh, eat, those nutrient, uh, eat, eat those nutrients. So the kinetic of this reaction is dependent on the temperature conditions inside the reactor. And we collected some experimental data at various temperatures for each for the nutrient and the biomass. And as the reaction evolves in time, food tends to disappear over time. And this is what you may see in the tank. Uh, but it is decreasing because something is eating it or it is decomposing chemically. And one of the ways to represent this process is to write an equation where the species decays over time with a negative in front of it. Uh, the biomass, on the other hand, is modeled in a slightly physical manner where it grows based on the nutrient present in the system and then eventually die, which is represented mathematically by this first term uh, in the reaction. And again, we need to specify the initial conditions. We will start with some amount of mass, which will consume the nutrients and keeps on growing. And we also need to specify the three parameters, uh, K1, K2, and K3 in the model. And here I'm just going to choose some arbitrary values to start with, since we are anyways going to estimate them eventually from data. So let us go ahead and simulate this model using again the model analyzer app to understand how the dynamics work. So as we saw in the previous case, we can always run a model by choosing, uh, by choosing the program of simulating the model. So all we need to do is open the simulate program, specify the settings that we're interested in and just run, just choose the run button. So here, the growth of the biomass, which is the red curve, uh, dominates the dynamics initially because it's growing and there's a lot of nutrient in the system that it can consume and keeps on growing. Uh, and eventually the death will take over since the cells have a finite lifetime and there are barely enough nutrients uh, left for the biomass to grow. Uh, but if you remember, uh, the goal is to estimate the parameters of the system, which are K1, K2, and K3. And for that, we need to do some analysis. So the first question that ever, anyone would ask, like if you want to do ha have a parameter estimation, we need some kind of experimental data. And we need some kind of program that does the parameter estimation. So data typically can be easily uh, uh, in, uploaded in the analyzer app, you need to just go to the data and load data from the file. I have already uploaded that here. And the next step is to, of course, visualize the data of how it looks like, since uh, it, since looking at the data is important and how how it how it uh, how it grows. All right. So let me just open a new data sheet and just drag and drop uh, the data, how it looks like. So here we have the experimental data for six different temperatures, 10, 14, 18, and so on and so forth inside the bioreactor. Also have the time column 
and also the two dependent columns, which are the time varying concentration species for each the nutrient and the biomass. So now that we are familiar with the data, we can perform the data fitting by using the fit program, which is again, if you go to the program, you will find the fit data here. I've already created the program for you and we can just open it and look at how uh, we are going to fit, fit the data today. So the way Symbiology performs the data fitting is it creates an objective function in the background. You don't have to worry about it. And it's a measure of the difference between the experimental and the simulation data. And of course, we want to minimize that difference so that the model data falls exactly on the top of the uh, experimental data. Uh, so we have the columns here, uh, headers, group, time, and then the concentration of the nutrient and the biomass. And the concentration of the component in the model should map to the corresponding data sets. So for example, the nutrient in the model should take up the values from the tables corresponding to the nutrient column in the data set. And likewise for the other state variables like biomass. And if you have other variables, you need to specify those. Next, we need to specify the parameters that we are going to estimate. And for our model, it is K1, K2, and K3. And we need to specify the initial values for these parameters and the transformation for these variables in this case. Uh, we also have an option to, 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 to select if you would like to have single estimates for all six temperatures, then we need to select this box. And if we unselect this, we will get a set of estimates for each subject in our data set. And that is what we are going to do today. And there are different options. Uh, option for solver methods that are provided for minimization, both for the local and then the global solver. And we can run this fit program once we are happy with the setup. So once we run this, what it will do, it, uh, it should create, yeah, here we go. So it should create another window uh, that, uh, that contains the statistics of the fitting. Uh, we have the log likelihood, which should maximize. And note that the log likelihood is a negative log of the objective function. So minimizing the objective function is the same as maximizing the log likelihood. We also have the first order optimality, uh, which, uh, which gives you the information on how the gradients look like when the, once the solution converges. And it should go to zero because if something reaches its maximum, the gradients over there has to be zero. And then the bottom row, uh, shows the convergence of each parameter values for six different groups. If you remember, we had six different temperatures in our case. And there are some analysis plot that generates in the background. And that's all also important because that gives you the information on how good the fit is. Uh, so the first is the fit between the model and the experimental data. So the red dots are the observed with the experimental data and then the dashed lines are the predicted data from the model. So you can also uh, see the predicted and uh, the observed value of the concentration where you want the data points to lie as close to the unity line for the fit to be a, to be a good fit. So the same you can do with the residuals versus time. And here you want to make sure that the residuals are evenly distributed on the either side. And then the lastly, we can also look at the residuals in a QQ plot. And the red line here represents a normal distribution. And if the dots here lie close to the line here, that implies that the residuals are normally distributed, which is also an underlying assumption for this kind of optimization. Uh, there is some data sheet as well, uh, which gives you the, num the exact values of what K1 and K2 and K3 are. And it also gives you statistics like the AIC and BIC, which will help you decide the regarding the accuracy of the fit. So here I showed you uh, on how uh, we can fit the, uh, the simulation parameters using the experimental data pertaining to six different experiments to a model which describes a bioprocess inside the reactor. And once we have calibrated this, this model can now be used for predictions. For example, if you want to predict uh, product given different starting nutrient concentration or reactor stopping time and to optimize the process yield. 
So let me quickly go back uh, to the slides uh, to share some of the useful tools to help you get started with your, uh, with your modeling projects. So hopefully uh, the tutorial gave you an overview of working with Symbiology and helped you decide if this is the right tool for your modeling project. And there are myriad other features like sensitivity analysis that might be interesting for you, but uh, we couldn't go show you due to time constraints. But nonetheless, uh, we, are, we were able to show them building and anal analyzing complex mechanistic models in Symbiology, which you can just draw, uh, which you can just draw like you would on a piece of paper and the tool will generate the math for you. Uh, and, but if you also know MATLAB, then on the top of that, you can take advantage of Symbiology's integration with MATLAB and automate your analysis for the batch processes via scripts or extend analysis beyond the standard tasks that are available to you. And if you are interested to look more into some of the examples, the documentation, and then some of the commands, you can look at the documentation on the web or in the product itself, uh, as well as to the MathFX iGEM page for resources such as uh, many video tutorials or webinars. And if you have more specific questions or need help with troubleshooting or implementation, uh, feel free to contact either me or go to support at mathworks.com. Uh, we also have a rich and vibrant online community for Symbiology where users can post questions which are typically answered by one of us at MathWorks or by some other user who, uh, some, of, some other user of Symbiology. And you can also find resources, sample codes for different problems, models, and the variety of them makes it extremely useful for someone who is new to Symbiology or have been using Symbiology for a, for a while now. Uh, and as a reference, we have put this example files for from this webinar on MATLAB Central. You can just search for the keyword iGEM Repressilator on the MATLAB Central file exchange, and it will give you uh, the, the Symbiology file that I showed you today. Uh, so uh, we hope you enjoyed the demo. Uh, good luck with your iGEM projects. And if you have any questions, please post uh, your questions in the chat or maybe uh, raise your hand uh, in, in, in the Zoom. Thank you. All right, so let me go over some of the questions. All right, so the first question is, uh, can you explain the bioreactor model formulas again? Okay, so let me go over the bioreactor. So for the bioreactor specifically, we, we have two species, which are the nutrient and then the biomass. So the nutrient keeps on decaying because it's consumed by the biomass first, and then it can also decay because of some chemicals that are inside the bioreactor. And the biomass grows after it consumes uh, those nutrients. And that's why you need to have a term which accounts for the growth, which is the first term. And it also needs to account for the depth, which is dependent, uh, which is dependent on the biomass. Because if the, the nutrient is no longer available, the biomass does not have enough uh, enough uh, nutrients to grow, and it also dies because of uh, because they don't have an infinite lifetime, right? They just have uh, a finite lifetime. And then Jonathan say, ask another question, what are the ODEs? So ODEs are just ordinary differential equations that, 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 that represents the dynamics of the, dynamics of the system. Um, yeah. So are there any comprehensive video guides or documentation on how to, absolutely. So the way I showed you here, so if you go to mathworks.com slash help that symbio, you have everything there to get you started with the modeling. I mean, it's, it has been pretty helpful um, and you can find almost every information there. And if you don't find anything, please write to us, support at the rate mathworks.com. You can write to me as well. Um, yep. So Henry asked, I'm not sure if this is on the literature, but how do you determine the Hill coefficients, AKA the N in the ODE? So the Hill coefficients, again, as you said, uh, it's very process dependent and also depends on the experiments. But 
for for a certain for it depends on the model that you are dealing with as well for the repressilator model there are values available for the n uh, but for the purpose of demonstration i have only used uh, i have used arbitrary values and it has uh, i uh, i haven't used any literature but i'm sure uh, there you can find some values for the n because there are a lot of experiments that has been done with the repressilator model Is there any way to do iGEM project without knowing how to use uh, MATLAB? Uh, I mean, I think you can. Uh, the only thing is the using MATLAB or SimBio will make your modeling extremely easier writing their writing rather than writing your own codes. Uh, because you can get, uh, it, it can take a lot of time to develop your own code on how to uh, on how to uh, model these uh, this system, so you can definitely do it, but I think uh, it it can take a lot of time to generate these to generate this on your own. All right, I think there are some questions in the chat as well. Okay, is it possible to do parameter estimation in Symbio for systems represented by ODE if you have experimental data for one, for example, if you have only values for biomass, but not nutrients. Okay, so you can definitely do that, uh, but since these are, uh, uh, let me show you. So since these are coupled ODEs, so let's say if you just had one ODE for the biomass, so then you could have, uh, the, you, you could do the parameter estimation for K2 and K3, but since these ODEs are coupled, so if you change one, the other also gets changed. So then you won't be able to capture the effect of the other. So that might be a little bit tricky. So you can play around with, you can, uh, uh, you can also interpolate your data sometimes if you have the nutrient data for few time steps and for few temperatures, you can interpolate those data and do, uh, do the parameter estimation, but without, with no nutrient data, you can't do it. All right, so. I think Abigail would be able to help you out on how to access the video recording. Yes, so um, there's a question in the chat. Mm -hmm. um how to get the slideshow and a lot of questions about the recording we are recording this meeting um, and we will post it to the iGEM website and notify everybody by email and also if you haven't already joined the iGEM global slack um, you should join that and you can ask any like competition related questions there um, and we will be posting about this webinar um, in there as well and there is a question from Yonathan, uh, how would I contact you? So my email ID is amahajan at the rate mathworks.com. So feel free to email me if you have any questions related to Symbio or MATLAB. May I ask what does the one slash in the code ODE generated in Symbiology means? I think I know what you So you mean this uh, one slash I'm guessing. So uh, this depends on the, so the concentration has to be consistent as well as the dimension. So it is, if it, it since it's placed inside a closed compartment, you need to account for the uh, volume of the compartment in order to make the dimensions consistent on both, on both the sides. So that's why I have the one over the bioreactor, which is the bioreactor here is the volume of the, is the vol is is either the volume in three D or the area in two D for the for the compartment? Do you have any recommendations for finding the coefficients in the OD other than experiments, maybe databases, websites, etc.? Uh, Henry it depends on what project you're working on. You can definitely find them in literature, papers, databases, but I can only recommend you if I have some information on your project. Uh, yeah, but I'm sure you can get information in, in the literature papers. It seems a 
fit irrational that nutrient decay is independent of biomass population theoretically will consume more nutrients that acts exactly right what you're saying is exactly right but i just for the today's demonstration i did not go into into a more complex model because i didn't want didn't want to get bogged down with the details of the model i just want to have a simple model and just show you the workflow of how you can use these things um, uh, how you can do some of the analysis using symbology so you are but you are absolutely right How are the bioreactor equations formulated? Where do they come from? Why does it only consider biomass and nutrient? So as I said, I'm just considering a very simple formulation. There could be a lot of other components as well in the biomass. Um, I just used the most simplest version is you have some nutrient that is consumed by the biomass and the biomass eventually dies. Um, so that's, that's it. But as you said, there are better versions of it. You can feel free to use those, but I did not use it for the today's representation because sometimes it takes a lot of time to simulate those systems. They can have a lot of parameters and I didn't want to get into the, uh, the dirty details of it. So uh, you can definitely go with the, with the much, much complex version, which accounts for all the details. Okay, so I think if anyone has some last minute questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A. Um. So uh, there's another question. So I am Achal. Uh, I am a senior application engineer at MathWorks and I work with the computational biology group. And what you saw is one of the tools that I work with called the Symbio. Uh, I also work with bioinformatic toolbox. So yep, that's about it. Okay, so I think that with that, we could probably wrap up. Sure. Um, so thank you very much, Achal, for giving this presentation. Um, it's, as you can see, very interesting and helpful for our teams. Yep. Um, uh, these resources for modeling are going to be very helpful, I think, because, um, yeah, it's just, and, and for everybody here, um, we also have a technology group at iGEM. Um, I, you can find, you can reach them in the global Slack when you have sort of these very technical questions about your particular system that you're working with and they can help guide you on those things um, as well as the MathWorks um, resources that are available online. Thank you everyone for coming. Hope uh, you enjoy the IGM competition. Thank you, Achal. Thank you. Bye everyone.